Okay, uh, yung paksa ko ay Media at Martial Law. Bago man ang PS21 na ni-launch na kurso ay may mga four semester ako nagturo ng Media at Martial Law sa uh, UP Journalism Department sa MASCOM. Uh, nung nag sumapya ako sa PS21 na uh, group, I was really bringing in the, yung mga materials ko at saka yung mga insights ko on how might we should teach media and martial law to students in uh, journalism courses at saka sa ibang kurso sa university. Um, yung pagtuturo ng media and martial law, I use these two themes. Importante kasi na hindi mo lang ipakita yung repression, repression of uh, media during martial law, but also to show that there was resistance coming from the journalists themselves or the media the, uh, the media itself. So ito yung dalawang theme that uh, I use to frame the discussion no, sa media at martial law. Okay, uh, balik na now. Uh, kailangan kasi ilagay sa context ang media repression under martial law. So ito yung context na binigay bigay ko. Before martial was declared, uh, yung media sa ating bansa is, was considered the freest in Asia. Uh, it uh, Halos lahat ng, ng media industries or media corporations are privately owned and independent. In other words, they are not regulated by the government, unlike in other countries where there were strong hand or presence of government media or state-owned media. In the Philippines, konti lang yung uh, state media because uh, the country has predominantly private-owned media and they are independent. In other words, independent from government control and funding. At la, marami sa kanila, especially the big media corporations, are owned by oligarchs. And they made their fortunes from, of course, sugar industry, from uh, trading, and also, uh, and of course, uh, yung uh, and commerce and media. Na dapat natin ma, ma, uh, la, ma emphasize din na the media natin ay dalawa yung tradisyon, yung revolutionary tradition. Uh, which is, of course, uh, goes back to the uh, La Solidaridad, the Spanish colonial times, sa paglaban sa Americano during the Commonwealth era, at saka yung libertarian, the post-war era, which is predominantly or basically American introduced na the free press uh, works towards, uh, you know, um, the creation of an informed public and supports democracy. Union. So the, these are the two traditions of uh, the media in the Philippines. Nung nag-declare ang martial law, marami nagsasabi na it is the dark era of Philippine media na, of course, na, na, na busalan or na silence ang self-regulated post-war media. At saka si Antonio Maria Nieves, Tony Nieves, one of the leaders ng uh, media during sa kapanahon ni Marcos, sabi niya, media as being under siege and journalists are working under the shadow of death itself. Ibig sabihin, there is incompatibility between authority and rule or dictatorship with the tenets of press freedom. In other words, hindi mo pwedeng isabay kasi press freedom thrives in in conditions of uh, openness uh, and democracy. So pag nilagyan mo siya ng control or constraint, hindi na siya malaya. Basically, that yung ng incompatibility best describes na the, bakit uh, the media under Marcus was uh, suppressed or repressed, sorry. So uh, when Marshall was declared, ito yung nangyari. Uh, this, according to Primitivo Mijares, ito yung number of dailies, uh, English dailies, and uh, business publications, Chinese dailies, lahat ito ay sinara. And yung mga major news organizations, sinecure yung building nila with military. Pinapadalan sila ng military and armed soldiers. Pinapaligiran yung kanilang uh, newspaper uh, offices at hindi sila uh, pinayagan na mag-print ng kanilang newspapers. And of course, uh, matindi din to, I'm going to discuss this on the next slide, the arrest of 
editors, columnists, and reporters who were independent and critical of the Marcoses. Of course, yung Marshall and Majesty Pani Marcos na arm, may arm rebellion kaya kailangan ng Marshall. This also true in media. Sinabi rin ni Marcos na there is communist conspiracy uh, and media um, are enabling yung mga yung communist propaganda and giving the communists a platform. Kaya kailangan din sila isara. So these are the major newspapers padlock by Marcos. Uh, so and uh, yung last yung last two free press and graphic are magazines and the rest are newspapers um, English and Filipino and mixed uh, newspapers eto yung mga inaresto um, si Rolando Fadul nagturo yan sa UP journalism department and also uh, Luis Tudoro of course Louis Beltran also taught in the journalism department and of course, ito yung mga publishers, si Chino Rosas, Eugenio Lopez, Judoro Luxin Sr., not the junior, Max Sullivan. So ito yung inaresto at kinulong. And after the uh, suppression of the press, um, of the uh, privately owned independent press, there emerged crony press. After a few days, uh, five days later, in uh, pinayagan na mag-publish ang Daily Express owned by Roberto Benedicto na fraternity brother and classmate ni Marcos sa UP College of Law. So sabi ni ni uh, Primitivo Mihares hindi totoong kay Benedicto yun actually yung pag-aari ng Daily Express ay nasa kay Marcos. Siya lang yung uh, so-called dummy. Um, but of course tumata yung owners uh, in public si Roberto Benedicto. And then there are three newspapers that were allowed to publish shortly afterwards. These are the uh, Daily Express, of course, the Bulletin Today, owned by Hans Menzi, isa, isa siyang general, was the former AD Camp of Marcos, at saka yung brother-in-law ni Marcos, who owns the uh, uh, Times Journal. It's a third newspaper allowed to publish. And then, of course, yung Channel 9 and DWWW ay pinayagan. And, of course, yung state-owned uh, radio ng bayan ngayon ay tawag. It was called PBS before. Mayroon ding presidential assistant si Marcos uh, by the name of Juan Tuvera. Asawa siya ni Karima Pulutan Tuvera. Nag Nag-publish din sila ng isang Chinese uh, newspaper the Focus Magazine, which is a literary culture magazine, at dalawang newspaper na Evening Edition, tsaka yung Metro Manila Times na Morning Edition. So ito yung pinayagan na mag-publish sa panahonan ni Marcos. And then, uh, the, another thing about uh, repression is may mga guidelines, may mga uh, laws, and the creation of layers of censorship. At tsaka this, this censorship uh, was institutionalized by these organizations. Kanya-kanya silang uh, censorship board. Meron si Enrile, uh, of course, Glenn is Enrile, the oldest living mammal in politics. Si Tatad, uh, buhay pa ngayon. And uh, meron din si Mijares, meron din siyang uh, censorship. The tawag dito ay advisory council. Meron din, uh, and of course, Yung KBP, Publishers Association, and National Press Club, these were controlled by the Marcos uh, regime. At saka yung Broadcast Media Council. So they take care of licensing, they take care of guidelines to publish. Saka may Department of Information under Serdania na tinitingnan nila talaga kung anong balita ang lumalabas. Uh, and during the time, in fact, si Enrile, yung lumabas yung movie na uh, the Godfather, gustong ipasensor ni Enrile kasi daw violent na yung mga scenes. So, uh, and then of course, it, kasi yung military was also doing its own censorship under those uh, groups. Yung military na hindi trained to, wala naman siyang expertise to look at media content, and suddenly sila nag decide kung ano yung lalabas na, na balita. And who, uh, how did Marcos control the media? As I said, censorship. Pero I think you masakit is censorship when a journalist 
uh, should be working on conditions of freedom at saka i-censor mo yung sarilo, masakit yun because you're lying to yourself. I think that's that's even more destructive psychologically. Um, and guidelines on what to write. And then, uh, sinabi ni Marcos na si Kaya Serdanya, you tell the editors to publish only positive stories or play down the negative ones. Tsaka yung mga critical stories, huwag na lang. And then, of course, they control the newsprint kasi hindi kailangan mo ng newsprint to print newspapers, but they monitor it so you cannot just set up your own newspaper without being licensed by the government. And that's also true for the broadcast station and television. So sabi ni Saganiyam, the latest Saganiyam, but sometimes censorship can become absorbed and ridiculous kasi uh, may mga sinasabi si Marcos at saka kung iba yung lumalabas, nire-retouch nila. Wala pang Photoshop noon, pino- nire-retouch nila yung mga photo, pati yung mga billboards ng uh, movies sa sinihan, mga posters. Kailangan kasi i-paint over yung mga firearms, kailangan krukat yung mga buhok ng mga lalaki, and this is really silly and so ridiculous. But that happen duty because of censorship. Okay, uh, so these are the laws. Ito yung mga batas kung paano pina, uh, pina, uh, pag- pinagawa yung censorship and the corresponding punishment. So this, uh, my ro- even rumor mongering is punished under PD-19. Of course, presidential uh, decrees are Marcos uh, created laws by the power vested in him. He declares himself to be the legislat- uh, legislator and, uh, or, or, and creates crafts laws. But some of these laws still works to this day till work to this day which is really uh we should be stricken out of uh, our jurisprudence because some of them are really harmful and created their conditions of control so in subversive journalism is penalized and pwede kang ipakulong ni Marcos um and of course there were extrajudicial killing of journalists ito yung mga journalists na namatay sa panahon na ni Marcos uh, and especially in 1984 there was a year after the assassination of Benigno Aquino Jr marami kasi yung mga journalists na naging critical na at pinasalvage or Cooley was killed in Marawi uh, um, and uh, eto yung mga journal, ano, Ding Kong, sorry, si Kenneth Lee sa Sulu, Primitivo Mijares, nagsapil lang siya, and these are the journalists that were killed, si Kenneth Lee, military na nakapatay sa kanya, yung mga gamit niya eventually fell into the hands of that soldier or the military who killed him, and there were also libel cases, yung I think, which is a, 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 a practice carried on to this day, yung media corruption, because journalists, ayaw nila ng, ano, uh, ayaw sila payagan magsulat, ni bribe sila ni Marcos at yung press release ilabas niyo and this practice of corruption continued to this day so in 1982 may mga may walong babaeng journalists that were invited for interrogation eto uh, sila uh, Cheris Doyo eto Maglipon si Lorna Caral Carlo Tirol uh, Babs Cacho Olivares eto sila um, pinatawag sila sa Port Bonifacio pinag uh, tatanong, and it was actually an interrogation before a military uh, panel, at sinasab mga questions ranging from the personal to the political to professional, kasi yung sinasuggest niya, nag brainwash kayo ng inyong mga readers, you're involved in brainwashing your readers, and these are the eight brave journalists who stood up and wrote uh, pieces that were critical of the Marcos dictatorship. And then, of course, may retirement for resignation of top editors, among them Magsanok, Rodriguez, at saka yung mga critical journalists, hindi binibigyan ng assignment. And of course, Tony Nieva was detained because of, he was accused of rebellion and subversion. And in 1982, after the We Forum wrote about the fake Medal of Marcos, it was raided nagkandak ng radio military at pinasara yung We Forum, arrested Jose Burgos Jr., the publisher and editor, and 13 of its staff, including Soc Rodriguez and uh, Armando Malay Sr. Okay, so, uh, at this is a quote from Leti Jimenez Magsano, the late Leti Jimenez Magsano, the former editor of PDI. Sabi niya, yung trabaho kasi ng journalist is simply to inform at saka, kung magsusulat kami na mga lubak-lubak sa daan at sa mga sex stores, para kami rear view mirror na nakikita namin yung mga manholes at saka uh, mga 
smooth road and we're, it's our it's our job to point out the flaws the the potholes and manholes uh, so to speak so walang mahulog doon sabi niya and this is of course the libertarian tradition of uh, the philippine press okay but of course kung may hegemony may counter hegemony for my ideology may counter uh, ideology and and uh, in um, you know the 80s there emerged what they called the alternative press aka the mosquito press paano nagumawa yung mosquito press paano lumita yung pangalan yung government uh, official mismo si Sir Danya nagsabi na well yeah mosquito press lang yan kasi parang mosquito na nga hindi naman siya harmful madali naman siyang patayin madali siyang uh, alisin and that's what they thought because the these are the definitions of mus- of the mosquito press or also called the alternative press basically these are anti marcos publication variety sorry din typo doon it was pub may mga iba ibang klase newspapers published by independent journalists we forum at malaya may mga newspaper din mga pahayagan na nilathala ng mga religious and ecumenical groups la, like the association of the of AMRSP uh, major religious superior uh, in the Philippines uh, and Veritas which is the Catholic Bishops Business Conference of the Philippines may mga supplements din these are part of the main uh, issues of newspapers but in the weekend uh, they come up with supplements and then my newsletters ng mga human rights organizations. And then, of course, may mga student publication din, gaya ng Philippine Collegian and other student publications in other universities. Meron ding underground revolutionary publications. These are part of the Mosquito Press uh, tradition. At saka may mga leaflets, occasional publications na pinag-distribute, pinag-mass dig. These are memeograph, photo stencil, and photocopy distributed by sectoral organizations and people's organizations during rallies, demonstrations, and pickets. And ano bang pag- nature? Ano ba yung uh, uh, anong klase yung, mosqu- yung mosquito press? These are anti-Marcos press, which is also oppositional press. What does it do? It opposes the discourse of the Mar- of the of the dominant discourse of the Marcoses. Uh, of the Marcos regime, sorry. And pag alternative press nabi namin, it's natin, it's counter hegemonic press. It uh, undermines the hegemony of the Marcos regime. Okay, ano ba yung mga factors that contributed to the growth of the mosquito press? Paano sumibol, paano lumago yung mosquito press? These are the, some of the factors. Yung spread of anti Marcos movement, yung lawak ng paglaban. Uh, against the Marcos regime, yung paglabasan ng mga political groups that provided sustained resistance and political awareness. And of course, nakikibaka uh, against the Marcos dictatorship. Of course, hindi natin madinay to the watershed, of course, was the assassination of Benigno Aquino Jr. that everything seems to be just like, uh, you know, uh, everything was, seems like to be a surprise to everyone na dumami yung mga taong lumaban at saka lumabas at nagbabasa at naghahanap ng dyaryo na naglalathala ng katotohanan. Then, we have to consider the technological side of it. Ito yung sinabi natin, technologies of reproduction. Ito yung mga xeroxing, electronic printing uh, technologies na mas madali magpakalat ng mga printed materials. Uh, dati kasi... Uh, linotype uh, pa nagiging electronic na mas mabilis na yung mga printing presses at saka may Xerox machine ng electronic printing and it's easy to spread information because of this technology. Well, you can say ngayon well, we have, we have uh, platform, social media before, those are analog but they were so useful in spreading uh, printed materials. So ano ba yung effects? Ano ang impact ng alternative press or anti marker press or mosquito press? Una, um, in-undermine yung hegemony of the Marcos press. At saka, uh, pinagbabangga yung dominant discursive space. Dati kasi monopoly lang to ng crony press. 
For example, yung pag, uh, the day after the assassination of Aquino, yung malaya na maliit lang siya na diaryo na 15,000 copies lang yung circulation, naging 90,000 kasi nag-print siya ng arrival statement ni Aquino that he was never able to read sa, sa welcome rally na wala nang na hindi naman na, na ganap. So nagiging malaki yung uh, circulation. And then of course, it saw the boycott of the crony press. Ito yung mga slogans nila. Uh, and uh, na, na, uh, pan- nagpanawagan to support the anti marcos press. And of course, yung alternative press nagsasalamin ng political resistance among Filipino journalists as part of the growing anti marcos movement. So nakisali din yung mga Filipino journalists uh, to in the anti marcos movement, in the growing anti marcos movement. Ano ba yung politika na uh, papel ng alternative press, ito yung pamamahayag na uh, nag-undermine uh, ng authority ng Marcos dictatorship. And then it opens a space for freedom of expression. At saka nagsumusuporta siya sa mga grupong lumalaban uh, sa, kay Marcos at ang mga tao nag-organisa around issues. And there are many groups like the urban poor, the labor groups, uh, sudyante, mga madre, uh, at mga taong simbahan, etc. among others, of course. And then, sinabi natin ng alternative press kanina is counter-hegemonic press. Bakit siya naging counter-hegemonic? Kasi nagpapahayag siya ng realidad na iba sa dominant diskurso ni Marcos na bagong lipunan, na kayo ay komunista, at uh, si Ninoy Aquino ay uh, you know, uh, um, komunista at uh, ay mga opposition ay hindi credible, etc. And of course, especially um, in the dying years of the Marcos dictatorship. And then, <clears throat> they also presented stories that normally considered sa news. So may mga stories na bat makliing dulag, the Chico Dam, the human rights violations, and of course, the uh, pakikibaka ng mga lumad sa Mindanao. And but pwede natin masabi na journalists are, uh, are organic intellectuals na in the sense of Gramsci's uh, uh, idea of organic intellectuals. Sila yung uh, gumagawa professionally. They have their own routines and their own values and beliefs, but they reflect on uh, the sense of meanings about their work and what and how they see the world. And of course, it's when they create uh, meanings uh, out of this engagement, a reflection and uh, uh, routines and professional practice, they also uh, bring in their colleagues and also uh, let the information or the content out to the vast audience that they, uh, they have created. Okay, ito yung mga useful na books or references when you look at the role of media. Ano nangyari sa media sa panahon ng Marcos dictatorship? Una yung, uh, this is the annotated, revised annotated edition ng Conjugal Dictatorship ni Primitivo Mijares. It was published in 2017 by Ateneo de Manila Press. Uh, sino sa si Primitivo Mijares? He is the media star of Marcos. He defected in 1975 at nag siya before the U.S. Congressional Committee. He published the book in 1976, The Conjugal Dictatorship. Nawala siya, disappeared uh, in uh, missing siya and since 1977, yung anak niya ay torture. Okay, malapit na ako, last three slides, and then ito yung reason bakit conjugal dictatorship. You read chapter 12, The Era of Thought Control, which is an important chapter on media. And then, of course, this is a, uh, a book published by the UP Press. The, it was edited by Ceres Loy. It put together two books into one uh, published. Ito yung may mga censored materials, yung minsan wala, uh, hindi pinapalabas sa materials, mga paglalaban ng journalists. This is a crucial book uh, as a reference in, in uh, delivering the, the lecture on media and martial law. The third is, it's a conference report 
published, but I think out of print na to, but I think there are still copies around. Uh, Memory, Truth Telling, and the Pursuit of Justice. It is. Uh, it was a conference in 1999 uh, on the legacies of Marcus Dictator. There are two, three articles actually written by Luis Chudoro, Isagani Yanbot, and Eugenia Apostol, and they give you a lot of information and insights on uh, the resistance and repression and resistance of media under martial law. Okay, and the last uh, book uh, is uh, published in Ohio, uh, State University. Uh, there's also the, uh, the, you pay attention to the chapter, The Media and the Second Coming of the First Quarter, so written by Talita Espirito, Passionate Revolution, The Media and the Rise and Fall of the Marcos Regime. Uh, it was published in 2017. I bought this in book depository because it's not here in the Philippines. Uh, I'll stop. Thank you very much for listening. We're all alive.